Hi guys, today has been looking forward to this for a long time. We get to talk about installing a solar system. So I drilled a hole through the side of the rig. Actually, there was a cable coming out for the CB, old CB antenna before. I just made the hole bigger. This is gonna come through and it's on the side, which is also nice because then leaking is less. I put a bit of an angle on it. I'm gonna fill it up with caulking after I'm, I've got it where I want it. It'll be solid. And then it goes right to my charge controller. And then I gotta run a cable down all the way down to the bottom and through to the batteries and I'm done. Rolling. So guys, I'm so excited to bring you, as I told you, our solar system. This is a project I've wanted since we got Bessie. One was to change the charge controller, which we did. Uh, we also wanted to get solar, which we did. I also wanted to then change out the coach batteries, which we will. And also, of course, put in an inverter and then last but not least a wee boost so we're in the process of doing those five different uh, pieces of this project and there's a few other little pieces that fit into that but let's get started on the solar install guys i've seen solar installs that run thousands of dollars i've seen some that run hundreds of dollars i've seen some that run uh as cheap as possible this project i wanted to stay within a really tight budget and get the maximum amount out of it. So that's what I've done, and I'm here to bring that to you today. What do you think the price of 200 watts of solar on the roof with an inverter, 400 watt inverter to run all of our gadgets would cost? Is that gonna cost $1,000? How about 500? How about less than that? How about 400? How about 300? How about $295 US? Yes, that's what I paid for my, our solar system. It's a 200 watt panel. PV, uh, poly I think is what it, they call it. I uh, bought that at a wholesaler in Calgary. I'll leave the links below. It's a funny name, Uncle Wiener's Warehouse. Uh, that's, that's where I got the panel. I got this, which is actually only half of it now, off of a place like Craigslist. Uh, I bought a 30 amp cable and I used two of the wires to run from the panel down to my solar charge controller. I bought this complete for 25 bucks on uh, Craigslist. And that came double this amount of cable and also came with a, a twist connect, a commercial twist connect. I got a Bestech 400 watt inverter from Amazon with USB ports all over the place. This thing is a beautiful piece. I'm actually gonna wire it right into the battery bank. Just to improve the project a little bit, I got two 50 amp switches, and I got a couple of other things. Number one, all of my connectors I'm putting together with dielectric grease. That makes it so that all the connectors are 100% and not just pretty good. I would highly suggest that. Number two, catastrophic fuse, so that if any of my batteries short circuit for whatever reason, this fuse blows and there's no uh, uh, current continuing to cause damage. I, I would suggest that this goes into every kind of a rig. I'll show you where I'm gonna install it. This is a four component meter that goes from the battery so I know how much amp hours I've used and it gives me a whole bunch more data that Jared from All About RVs suggested. So that's why I bought this. There's a few other clamps and things that I bought too but the whole package, $295 US. Now, there is one other component that I didn't mention, and that's, I installed this with a friend, and I was able to use his garage. 
Well, that was priceless. And he said, he said, Kent, I got one of these for you. I, just take it. I, I, I want you to have it. Thank you, uh, Kelvin. And uh, he also gave me some, uh, some fasteners. He let me use some of his tools. He brought over a ladder, uh, all kinds of good things. He helped me install. So let's get into the install. So first of all, we put the panel on the roof. Oh yes, I bought the, uh, the, the solar panel install kit from Amazon. I was gonna manufacture my own and when I got down to it, it just didn't make sense. For 18 bucks, I could order an all done kit. So I did that. And I installed it with the, the butyl tape. I mean, with the, the butyl caulk and uh, fastened it right to the roof. Everything worked perfect. And then I stripped off the two leads that came off of that and put them right into the, the twist connect. Uh, I like that connection. I used dielectric grease. And then I strung it to the front and put it in through the side port on the roof, off of the roof. Uh, where I already had a cable coming out. So that's how I gained entry into the coach. Then I connected everything in to the solar charge controller and wired it directly to the battery and everything works great. Tip for you, I was driving down south from my friend's place uh, heading to the border and our, our vehicle died. And so we pulled off with Bessie on the, on the side of the highway what was happening is the charge, the, the solar was picking up so much power that it was overriding the alternator. Uh, they were competing. So the alternators just said, you, you go. And what was the problem is it wasn't getting power to the charging battery. And I was losing power to the system as the vehicle was running. So what I've done since is when I'm driving, I power down the amount of voltage that it will receive from the panels and that way I don't have that uh, competing voltage system anymore. So that's, a, that's something I learned on the road and everything's been working great since. Now some people love the idea of installing solar and battery banks and then powering it to the entire rig where every plug is hot. Well, uh, Lisa and I decided a long time ago we were going to live a little lighter and uh, little li live a little bit freer. And so when we're boondocking, we do without. Uh, so we, we, we still want to have all of our stuff charged, we want to have our computers running, and we want to have our, our, uh, our cell phone coverage uh, taking place. So those are the, cons the things that we want to make sure are powered. We just choose to do without. Uh, we run the fridge on propane, we cook with propane, we do without the microwave, which we don't use very often anyways. Uh, we do without the coffee maker, that's not true. We actually run the generator to make the coffee. And then we shut the generator off. So we're good. Uh, and we also do without whatever else is high power, like a hair dryer, like an instant pot. Uh, and we just choose when we're boondocking to live a little lighter. One thing I want to mention, when you're working on your RV, take your time. Uh, yesterday, uh, we, we had a, uh, a power plug in the bathroom that would always pop the breaker uh, because it was getting old. So I went and bought a brand new one to replace it. Exactly the same unit, right? No, 20 amp, 20 amp, 120 volt, 120 volt. So I took a picture of it. I took this out. I put this one, which is installed now, in place of this, and it would pop, 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 pop every time I turned on the power. And I'm like, oh my word, what's going on? Well, what I figured out is there's a line and a load, and on the new one, they're reversed. So I had to figure that out. I had to cross all the wires over and install it differently. But I had to think through this. It wasn't just a plug and play, because it's an RV. So guys, when you're working on your RV, take your time, double check things, triple check, and then think through it and see if what you're doing makes sense. And when you run into a, a challenge or a problem, uh, take that moment, take a breath, think about how it works. And actually it's working great now. I thought I was going to have to take it back. And now it's installed. It's been working great. Enjoy. When we left Lethbridge, we stalled on the side of the road, as I mentioned. I don't know. Um, I got to check a few things to find out. All of a sudden I lost power. Um, it could be that we hooked up solar and it's not hooked up healthy to the uh, 
electrical system, but I'm going to find out. Uh, my oil pressure went up, and so, yeah, I think I'm going to be disconnecting that, uh, solar. that solar right now. Yeah. So I'll get, uh, first of all, I'll disconnect the, I'll disconnect up top, I think. Okay. Uh, i got to figure this out. There's a few other things that started happening that were really weird. I would check the voltage levels on my batteries. They were gone. They were at, right, at, right at nothing. And I was just totally confused because I go measure them at the battery and everything's fine. Th there was a, a unit here that was making noise that was sort of weird. It was the, uh, the gas sensor, but it wasn't, it wasn't doing what it should do. The furnace wouldn't run. Lots of different things were happening. It was like we had a ghost in the machine, if you, if you like that terminology. Did I hear somebody say ghost? <laughs> no, not that kind of ghost. No, we had a ghost in the machine. And so what I did is I started to get really frustrated that all the systems were not working properly trying to figure this out. I had to take some time to figure this out. Think what's the bottom line to all these things. What I found, we haven't we have an older rig and the negative ground from the batteries to the chassis was getting corroded. So guys, if you have an older rig, undo that bolt, scrape it up with some steel wool or some uh, emery cloth, use some dielectric grease, put it back on and you'll have a negative that doesn't cause you issues. So now, no more ghosts. So that's it guys. That's all you need. 300 bucks and a friend and you can have 200 watts of solar charging your system too. Enjoy. Glad you could be a part of this today and I am looking forward to installing the WeBoost, the batteries, getting this actually attached to our desk so we can run all of our equipment.